think what people, I wish people understood more and what I explain in the book is that you, your body doesn't need antioxidants from the outside. Your cells are equipped with their own internal antioxidants to deal with oxidative stress. So the question is, why do we have so much excessive oxidative stress in the first place? And all that ex excess oxidative stress that we're told to eat more antioxidants for, it's coming from the foods we're eating. So if you know which foods are causing, are the root cause of that oxidative stress, and you remove those from the diet, then your own internal antioxidant systems can mop up those excess free radicals that, that we naturally expect to see from you know, eating even a healthy whole foods diet. There's a certain amount of oxidative stress that we are, we are naturally supposed to see when we eat. It's part and parcel of food processing. But uh, so if you take the culprits out of the way and let your body, you can, let your, you can trust your body to do the rest. So when people go on a ketogenic diet, especially if it's a whole foods properly constructed, well-formulated ketogenic diet, the, one of the reasons why that is such a powerful antioxidant strategy is because it removes so much of the sugar and flour and other refined carbohydrates uh, that promote the oxidative stress in the first place. So the Metabolic Health Summit is important because it focuses on uh, really the root causes of most of the chronic mental and physical health diseases we all fear. So whether it's depression or dementia or obesity or cardiovascular disease or fatty liver disease, certain forms of cancer, uh, all of these conditions that we think of as normal, uh, normal parts of aging, uh, all of these conditions which we think uh, we have so little control over, they're really rooted in uh, living a high insulin lifestyle. Uh, and most of metabolic health has to do with controlling your insulin levels. And not about your glucose levels because uh, you know, as, as, as so many people who come to this conference already know, we're not looking at the right markers. We're not, we, most people, uh, at least in this country, are, are, are taught to believe that they, I mean, I think people are starting to understand they do need to pay attention to their blood sugar levels, but their blood sugar levels are one, that's one of the last dominoes to fall is the fasting blood sugar. And that's the test that most people get when they go to their, to their healthcare practitioner. Uh, but by the time your fasting blood sugar level is uh, above normal, then uh, it, it's, it's, you already have a significant amount of metabolic damage. What you want to know is how much insulin is it taking for you to keep that fasting blood sugar under control? And because those high insulin levels are what are damaging your metabolism over time. They're damaging your insulin signaling system. Uh, they are slowly, silently uh, choking off your, brain, your brain's energy supply. And of course, that's going to lead to all kinds of problems uh, for every cell in the body, not, 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 uh, uh, not just the brain cells. But uh, where it comes to the brain, it's, it's particularly important because one of the diseases we all fear and that we feel we have no control over is Alzheimer's disease. When actually we know, we've been known for 20 years now, that there's a, tr there's a huge uh, um, uh, relationship. There's not, not, just a, not just an association, between insulin resistance and Alzheimer's disease, there is actually a causal, a direct causal relationship between insulin resistance and Alzheimer's disease. And most people don't know that. So most people don't know uh, that there's already something they can do right now uh, that, that, that could dramatically reduce their risk for Alzheimer's disease.